Okay, so building a TTS lab. That's the name. And it's me. Alex forcing me to do this. <laughs> okay, so what is the agenda here? Why we came up with this presentation? What to consider? And the, the, the thing is, the why, it's, it's more complex than people realize when you are building the lab. Because people, they, they ask me and other guys, they know they have home labs, and they're like, uh, why did you actually build up two tests and do several other things? And then what to consider becomes very complex because it's really based on needs, and you're going to see why I, I say that. Some other considerations that you have to take into account when designing your home lab. Some options, because we, we, we built these and we built things that didn't work. So we, we know what not to buy. So that's the bottom line. And that helps other people because oh, they bought that, didn't work, I shouldn't buy it. And some real world examples, like my lab and some other guys. So you can see what these people actually have and the reasoning behind all of this. And then some questions, of course, we're going to have no time for the questions. That's big. So why? Well, many reasons. The first one is some people want to have a lab, but where do I start? So they have really no clue what sort of hardware they need. They have some idea. OK, I, have, I, I need a computer. Yeah, that's the first thing you need. You need a computer. But then what else? How can I expand on that? Uh, so that's the first one. The second one, some people, they don't exactly know how much money a, a lab like this may end up costing. Are we talking about something I can put together with 500 bucks? Or are we talking about something that is going to cost me, like one of the guys that you're going to see on this slide, his home lab is probably around 15k <laughs> and that's not the worst like one of my friends he, he used to come to me to me every once in a while he's around he had a lab at home okay he lives in, in New Jersey no I'm not kidding this okay because I've seen the lab and when I heard the first time I, I thought it was a joke but then I was like, no, no, this is serious. And then I was at his house, you know, several times, and I'm like, holy shit. So basically, he lives in a house. There is a basement, you know, door to the basement. During the winter, he could just leave the door of the basement open. It would warm up the whole house. <laughs> he needed no heating in the house. <laughs> and I'm like, man, you are like, you know, insane. And it was because of his land. And then he would go down to his basement, no joke here, like 42 U-Rex, like three, <laughs> like loaded. There was like four nodes, new tannics and sands, like it was a fucking data center, like amazing shit. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he could push, I remember with login GSI, we would push like four, five, six hundred people connecting to this home lab. <laughs> what, what his wife says about that? Well, the electricity uh, bill. Well, that's the thing, he wasn't married. <laughs> <laughs> that was the <laughs> wife. It was just about that. Rich. That's why he got a board. He must be either very rich or single. <laughs> that's exactly it. Like, no wife. Yeah. Let's build a data center in the basement. <laughs> Good plan. <laughs> so, you know, costs, uh, it, it can be anything, okay? You can do with uh, 500 bucks, but if you want to go like my buddy, and I think it was $300,000 when I put that. So, you can do that. The other thing is having similar labs as other people, it helps. And people don't realize why, you know. But a couple of main points. Normalizing results, you know, making sure results are similar. Because if we, if we are all running similar hardware, you don't expect too much variation on, on, on results, right? 
because it's pretty much the same hardware, same storage, same everything. So we all should achieve fairly similar results. And again, because of that, it's much easier to replicate findings. Especially like when you are trying to work with other people on, on something. A good typical example is Benny, you know, Ruben and when Sean, you know, before he moved to the dark side. <laughs> so when he was still a good person, if you remember, they were all doing this vGPU and he, he was running stuff at home and it was pretty much the same hardware that Benny had at home. You know, that Ruben was trying to, to have, you know, always the same, same video cards, same everything. But of course, if I'm gonna publish something and we are all working together, if I have hardware that is completely different than yours, then of course I'm gonna get two different results, like guaranteed. The other thing people don't realize is if you're gonna do a lab, if lots of people are thinking about having a lab at home, and we all get together, we can actually get better costs, you know, better pricing for many things. Especially when you get into the niche hardware, and I'll, I'll talk about the niche hardware so you understand what I mean by that. So it helps with the price. So you can actually build the same for less money. Instead of, you know, we buying four SSDs, we buy 40. Well, there will be a difference in price. So, Keep that in mind when you're thinking about building something, if there is other people willing to do it. And there are many options, so it's just when you look like for a, a case or a motherboard or, or which SSD to use, which one not to use and so on, it's just overwhelming. You spend a lot of time trying to find what to buy. So these were, were basically the reasons why I decided after talking to all these guys and they are asking me about my own lab, I said, okay, let's put it together on the presentation. And again, learning from our mistakes. Because don't think we always buy good stuff. Like we bought a lot of junk over the years. Okay. So some stuff to consider. First one, there is no perfect lab, okay? Even my buddy's $300,000 lab, it wasn't perfect. Because if you wanted to move that lab with him, he needed like a bus, you know? <laughs> so that's a problem. A bus and 10 people to move the racks. So again, there is no perfect, okay? And you can trust me on that, because I built several things. It gets down to needs. <clears throat> so the first thing you have to keep in mind is what do I want to achieve? What is my main goal with a lab? In my particular case, my main goal for my lab was I needed it to be portable. That was the first one. I wanted something that I can lug around with me, I can go through airports and, and, and all that and you know, not be seen as a terrorist. It's something that's good, but who can go? Oh, I can see it's a, a computer or something. And not something that has like a, you know, a timer and beeps and then... Uh, <laughs> no, you're not going anywhere about it. So based on your needs, and what are your needs? As I said, mine was portability, but there is other needs. Budget. Budget is, is a need and, and a driving factor. You may say, oh, I don't have 300,000 bucks to, to spend on this. Or raw power. Like you want to, for whatever reason, you want to push like my buddy. He really wanted to test uh, login VSI and all these things, pushing, as I said, five, six, seven hundred users. Is that what you are after? If it is, it's a factor I have to consider that that's going to be key in building this lab. Is it raw power? Is it portability, like in my case? As I said, I want something that I can carry that has some nice features, but I'm not after, you know, running 300 people. Because okay. I, I heard that the, the trunk in a Lamborghini isn't, isn't that big. So it, it, actually, <laughs> it actually fits my lab in that, in that trunk. Yeah. And actually the truck is not too bad. I do groceries all the time, you know, I go to the supermarket with the car. 
and then it's kind of a Lego, you know, process. You have to <laughs> to build in a certain way and put things in the trunk in a certain way. Then everything fits. <laughs> but take some, you know, learning with that car. That that's for sure. And. Do you want something that is really flexible in terms of, uh, well, if I want to now test the new NVIDIA whatever, is it something I have to consider that I can unplug something easily and plug something new and I will have new features? So I have to consider all these things when building the lab. And which technologies you are going to test? Especially, let's say today, lots of people are into the hyper-converted, right? They want to test something to, like that is hyper converted. They want to get the new tenets, the community edition, they want to do it. Or they want to do the VMware hyper conversion solution and also like Rayo and so on. So what are you actually testing in terms of technology? Because that changed the lab completely. And the hyper conversion stuff, it's a good example. Because if I want to do that and I want to have, you know, not only say, yeah, I'm running it. But okay, I want to run and I can actually, I want to see some performance. Is it really much better? Does it really replicate stuff around easily? Well, then you, you need now something that has a 10 gig on the back. You know? So that now changes your needs and changes all your selection process. I need a 10 gig switch. I may need a motherboard that has a 10 gig interface right there. If it's not, uh, how do I add that? Is this switch 10 gig Ethernet or it's an SFP that I, I, I plug it on? So again, think about all these things and then you determine your lab. So some considerations on the hardware. Storage. Are you gonna go for external units for the storage? Or it's gonna be all internal? And that's a question. Because if I'm going to do, let's say, like I'm going to show in a, in a slide, like a new Tandix Community Edition, just hyper conversion. Well, it's all node based. I have my storage, my computing, everything in one node. So I don't need to worry about external storage. But now if I'm going to do, like, oh, I want to build actually like some kind of AJDR cluster run ESX or Zen server, so I need to have an external storage, what is it going to be, you know, so external versus internal. The computing node, uh, CPU, maximum memory, that's a, a, like a, a good one, because the memory size, pretty much, like how much memory you want, it pretty much determines how big your computer, your computing node can be. That that's, you know, key. If you want to have 64 gigs, I can tell you, okay, if that's a requirement, you cannot run this, 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 this. You cannot buy any of this hardware. And then if you cannot buy any of these, it means your portability is now gone. So something to consider. Do you want to do GPU stuff? You see all these NVIDIA people and, you know, they are now all over the place because they want to make everyone believe everyone needs a GPU. What is not necessarily true. But again, do you want to test that? If you want to, that is right there a determining factor. What are you going to buy? Now I need a what on my GPU? Are you going to buy something that has like an Intel Iris built-in? And for now you're going to be stuck with Zen server? And are you going to go for the NVIDIA? You're going to get some K2 off eBay, so it depends. But that will be a determined factor on pretty much everything else. Like I said with the memory, I want a 128, you can't buy this. I want a GPU, you cannot buy that. The switch, are you doing just really switching? Do you want to do, you know, routing? Where is the routing? Is it going to be external, or you want to switch to take, you know, to take on that role as well? So something to consider right there on the switch. Is it going to be managed, or you don't give a crap, or you don't need it to be managed? 
is going to be one gig versus ten. Are you going to do link aggregation or not? So again, you have to consider all these things. VLAN checking. Exactly. All that VLANs, everything. When are you going to do WAN emulation? That's, a, that's another one. And for me, that, that was a critical one. For me, that was also, my main requirement was this, this external, and I'll show you why, and the importable. That was my main requirement. And when you go and when emulation, some people are like, oh no, when emulation, what do you mean? Why do I need anything? I can get like a live CD, when emu, or I can get these two. Well, guess what? They don't work like a hardware WAN emulator. <coughs> and I say that to someone that uses WAN emulators for years. You know, the Linux network stack works in a different way. You have, you know, scheduling, you have timing issues. Long story short is Linux WAN emulators are not good WAN emulators. So it's something that you have to account for if you want to do that sort of stuff. And do you need wireless access points? Do you need wireless access to the lab? In my case, it was a nice to have. Because I can look that thing around, as I said, and connect from here, from my laptop, and I can do all sorts of cool stuff. And I'll, I'll mention what that is, what all the cool stuff is. So just some ideas of, and, and prices. For this storage, I really like the Synology units. If you're gonna go after them, you know, small box, this one, four drives. You can do like two SSDs, two regular drives, or all SSDs if you want. If you put like two SSDs and two drives, the unit is smart enough to realize, oh, you have SSDs, do you want me to allocate the SSDs for caching? And then the, the OS running on the unit actually caches stuff into the OSD for you, into the SSDs and keeps like the, the cold data into the, the regular drives. So that's a pretty cool unit. It does like a LACP you know, for the trunking. Very good unit. It's certified for VMware, for Zen Server, for Hyper-V, iSCSI, NFS, and it's 550 bucks. So not bad right there. So for service, oh, why didn't I mention internal storage? Well, I didn't mention internal storage because these days everyone is using to, you know, your SSDs, your Samsung, you know, and VME and so on. So that that's that became like a commodity. Everyone is like, is dealing with these things now, right? So let's check this external. That's why I didn't mention the internal. The servers, Mac Minis. Like in my case, it's Mac Mini Basic. And the reason is the old i7s, they are like quad core. You can bump them up to 16 gigs of RAM. So there, there is a lot of stuff you can do on the Mac Minis. Even remove the CD drive and put the second bay. So you can have two drives internally. And I mentioned the older one because the older one allows you to do all that. It's not only a better CPU, it's quad core and so on, but you can open and do things. The new one you can't. So you can get these off eBay. I didn't put a price because, you know, it's eBay, right? eBay you may get for 50 bucks or a credit list or you may go for a thousand bucks. No one knows. The Super Micro. This is the, 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 the name is Super Micro Super Server. I don't know if you guys have seen this. I'll show you a picture. But it's basically a nice, small, little box. Not that little, but it's still a small footprint. But it can take up to 128 gigs of RAM. Is that the, the, the thing that the, the guy from Tinkertry uh, showed at, uh, at the Vegas event? From? Tinkertry. Yeah, that, that's what's the website. But I believe. Oh, I'll show it. Yeah. Like Super oh. Micro. Yeah, so it's yeah. around 1200 bucks. Yeah. Pretty cool unit. Takes lots of stuff inside, so it's it's pretty good for a, a home lab. But it's 1200 bucks, and that's just for the the case with the CPU and power. 
So uh, as soon as you add memory and whatever inside, yeah. the price goes... 2100 or something like that. Oh, I'll show you. It's, it's more than that. <coughs> then we have the new Intel, you know, the Intel Nux. Two versions here. This one is the latest with an i7 CPU and a decent Intel Iris built-in as well. It's the one that has a... It's not the... This one, the second one, is the one that looks like more like a little cube like the panel logic units of the best. The first one here, it's more like a, a like, it's almost like a nice phone, you know, like a, a phone, it's kind of squishy, you know. So that's the latest one, running i7. But at 660 bucks without any storage and any memory. So as soon as you add the memory, it takes up to 32 gigs and you add storage, you are probably talking about 1100 bucks for this guy here. This one is cheaper. Okay. For this switch, this one is a good bet, the Netgear. Because this one is actually an 8 port 10 gig switch. And this is retail, so you actually find this guy for less money. So 800 bucks for 10 gig switch with 8 ports. If you remember when these things started popping up, like 10 gig internet, it was like, you know, give me your car, I'll give you the switch. <laughs> so now it's more like, give me your bicycle, you know, a good bicycle, and I'll give you the switch. That's a, a good one, and does all this stuff, you know, the VLAN and, and all the trunking, everything you need, it, it's done on the net here. The HP one, this is actually a very nice switch because it's really tiny. It's a small switch, it's fully managed, does VLAN, does trunking in, in, in a small, tiny 8-port switch. And that's actually the switch I run on my lab. And I have no complaints, it's perfect. For the web emulator, the box I recommend, that posits the Link Trophy Mini 2. But the problem is, as you see right there, it's 2,000 bucks, the damn thing, okay? It's the same when, later, uh, when I got this guy, I actually, I know the CEO of the company, that was it. So I sent him an email, I explained, listen, I'm gonna be doing all this, and not only me, because it was me, Benny, and Sean doing it. And then I told him, would you be able to get us three of these boxes? And I knew it was too grand age. But then he was like, okay, I know what you guys are doing, it's community, every time you present, you know, you, you talk about these things. And he actually shipped me three of these. Zero. Zero cost. So all we need to do is say that we know you. Uh... Yeah, well, <laughs> no, certainly, like, if you guys want to look into this for that kind of, of, of stuff that we have been doing, I, I can get you a discount guaranteed on these guys, that's for sure. I send him an email, he's gonna give you, you know, probably half of these. And it's a very good unit, okay? Very, very good. And it's small, it's like, it's not a, as small as a phone like this, but it's a little bit, you know, it's, it's almost as small as this. So I would say like around this, and has the ports like on the back, three ports, like very nice, very easy to carry around. So great unit. So some real world examples. So first, my own lab. I name it I cluster. And this is all I have on the lab. So two Mac minis, each one with 16 gigs, with the original one terabyte drive that comes on them. Then I have a Synology, an older model. The one I put on this line is the 416. I have the 412. I bump it up the RAM because you can, like a computer, you just buy like a SOD, you know, a DIM, open, but more memory. So mine is maxed. I think it's, I meant it, 3 gigs of RAM. And, you know, just helps running things faster. Then I bought four of the Samsung uh, Evos one terabyte SSDs. So that's what I put inside the storage. So my storage is all SSD. 
I don't use for any, you know, I, I don't have any drives, regular drives on the storage. Because again, in my case, it, I'm rebuilding shit all the time. It has to rebuild shit fast, you know. I don't need slow shit. So that's why I went for the SSDs. Question? Do, do, uh, do you check the, the cell? Life under my you just fingers crossed. No, uh, well, here's the deal. Prices first are coming down. When I bought it was one thing, now it's much cheaper. The other thing is the storage, as I put four of them, the storage sees as four, you know, it knows it's SSD, but as I have four, it builds a RAID volume. So even if one dies, Nothing happens with my storage. So in my case, do I keep a, 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 an eye on everything, making sure? No. And got to a price point these days that I don't care if this thing you know, explodes. I'll just go and buy another one, plug it back, and I'm done. So just keep that in mind. I think I, I check the prices on these guys. It's like now under 400 bucks, 300 bucks. So, not saying it's dirty cheap, but these were like a thousand bucks when they came out, 600, 700 bucks. And now it's like half the price. So, I, I, I don't care too much about that. If you are concerned, what I always tell people, especially if drives, regular drives, okay? Because I had that problem myself, and thanks to my own stupidity, I had to pay a price for that. I had one of of these units, not a Synology, but the Synologies are, are really smart. The OS is really good. But I had a, I think it was a D-Link something, two drive base, and one drive died. And I'm like, okay, let me get another drive. So I got another drive and I'm like, okay, let's put it in. So I put it in, and then the unit's like, oh, yeah, yeah your drive died, then you put a new one. Do you want to format? And I'm like, yeah, thinking, do you want to format the drive? <laughs> <laughs> and the motherfucker was like, do you want to format the whole fucking unit? <laughs> and it formatted the whole unit. And I'm like, shit, where is everything that I had? If it was, you know, lab stuff, I wouldn't be concerned. But it was actually my wife's pictures. And then I'm like, holy shit, I'm probably dead tomorrow. <laughs> so I got the old drive and I brought it to a company that recovers drives. And recover the drive, they did it. Two thousand bucks later. <laughs> it saved your life. Yeah. <laughs> two thousand bucks. You see how cheap my life is? <laughs> Best two thousand bucks ever spent. <laughs> That's the reason why I'm still around. <laughs> So now we, now we have a backup plan for us. Well, now I have a, a, a <coughs> not a sign on, I have a QNAP for the home. So now I have multiple drives, so if shit happens, chances are I'm not going to replace all drives and format everything. So now I'm kind of protected against my own stupidity. So it's, it's a good thing now. But again, no concerns here, great unit. Then the switch, the small HP, as I said, tiny, works, I can manage, I can do everything. The link trunk mini, and then I have this wireless router just for wireless access. So that was how much I spent, okay? Around 7K back in the day. But again, this lab allows me to do some really, really cool stuff. I'll probably bring it to Rome. Because it, one of the things that I can do when I designed this thing, I, I said to myself, okay, I want to have something very flexible. So on the back, well, first I got a carpenter that is, you know, one day I show up at this guy, because I live in Canada, in Ottawa, and, you know, <coughs> lots of people like to, to build these really nice things with wood. And I'm looking on the internet, okay, where there's a good carpenter? So I found this guy like kind of close to my house and the guy is like he only builds really high-end shit like it's amazing what this guy 
you know, built. And I show up there and I'm like, you know, I want to do this. And he's looking at me like, because he's used to make like nice tables and, and chairs and, and someone shows up with a bunch of computer shit and asking for a case. And then he understood it was, oh man, this is really cool. So he actually built a, a really nice case where everything fits in, has doors, you know, on the back. And then on the back I actually built a, a small patch panel. So what that allows me to do is basically this, I go with these small cables and I can route, for example, when I connect to the wireless, I can actually send the connection from this guy through the WAN emulator port to the switch. So basically, if I connect through the wireless with a laptop, I go into the WAN emulator and I say, okay, I wanted this much latency, this much loss, this much bandwidth. <coughs> so I can actually simulate my laptop connecting using wireless but that wireless connection can be anything. And what that means? This is what it means. When I was doing 3G testing to understand how you know, the protocols would work over 3G connections, I actually got a phone, my phone. I ran some network tests on the phone multiple times to see what the phone was telling me in terms of latency, bandwidth, and loss. After I got multiple samples, I, you know, got an average of everything. I injected that into the WAN emulator, and now, even though I'm doing Wi-Fi from the laptop to the wireless router, because of the fact that the connection from here to hit this guy is passing through the WAN emulator with the parameters I injected, the connection behaves exactly like a 3G connection. If I were connected using 3G. So allows me to do that kind of stuff and go to the patch panel and patch directly here and then I can hook up the laptop internet directly to the switch. So it gives you so much flexibility in terms of how the connection happens from the end point to the, you know, to like your ZenX server. <coughs> that for me was key. I wanted to see all these protocols, how they would behave on any kind of point condition. So that's why I did the patch panel on the, on the back of the unit. So very cool lab, and because of the fact that I have the storage, I can do, you know, I run ESX for whatever reason. Because the big mean is actually, they can run anything out of the box. You can throw ESX, you can throw Zen Server, you can throw Hyper-V. Everything works. So that's the, the other thing to consider. And I ended up with the Synology, because then it's iSCSI actually. There is a trunk to the switch. So I get four gigs from storage to switch. And then I can do V-Motion, I can do all that cool stuff, you know. So very, very powerful lab. And again, portable. Can I do vGPU stuff? No. Do I care? Not really. Okay, I can do that in, in a different setup. This one actually is the one that Jaren, if you know Jaren, is around. This is what he built. Just for comparison, the size, this is a, an Apple mount. So it's this guy here has a Xeon with 12 cores. Then he got you know, several S you know, SSD and VME, SATA. So he has all the, the layers of storage. Then he puts 128 gigs of RAM on the little box. Got a, a case that is that case power supply, and now you have a really portable, powerful, you know, thing. But again, compared to mine, I don't have the, the raw horsepower that he has. I cannot, I, I'm limited to 32 gigs, 16 on each node. He can run way more VMs than I can. But the thing is, I can do way more things than he can do. So again, it gets down to the use case, what you are attempting with the, the lab. And he spent around three grand to build that guy. This is another one, you know Trond? He's an app blog, you guys know him? So he's like this millionaire Norwegian that retired to Brazil. 
So he, one day he goes to Brazil sailing, and he's like, holy shit, women here, are, you know, they're good looking. And he never went back to Norway. <laughs> Seriously, the, the, you know, that's serious. And the beer is much cheaper in Brazil than in Norway. <laughs> sure. yeah, well, so like, it goes for almost any country in the world. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and, and that's it, he never looked back. He probably forgot how to speak Norwegian. So this is what he built. You see the case right here? That's the super micro. Mm -hmm. The super server. 128 gigs of RAM. He, you know, he's much richer than I am, so he puts two terabytes. <laughs> the chip, I stay with the one terabyte. He, he went nuts, like two terabytes. And then he added another SSD layer, and a VME or whatever it was, 500 gigs, and then another one, 400 gigs. So he went nuts. <coughs> so these guys actually have two 10 gig ports on the back. Two 10 gigs and two 1 gigs. So he has 10 gig for the motion and 1 gig for management and traffic, regular traffic. The problem is, each one of these, 5 grand. So he spent 10k on these two guys, okay? And if you look at here, do you see these guys here? Do you recognize these three boxes? Three Mac Minis. So he, he built another little lab with three Mac Minis and Nutanix C edition. So he has three Nutanix, this is a Nutanix cluster, each with 16 gigs. So that's it. Like, any questions on that? <coughs> Ever considered UPS? A uh, what? A UPS uh, battery? Uh, I, I have at home, yes. But you know, just to make sure Major shit doesn't happen. I mean, if you if you buy a, a lab that's that, that expensive, it could be really oh, yeah. bad if, if lightning stroke and, and thing burn out. So oh, so for sure, yeah. So that, that's guess. a good point. Yeah. So and I actually lost stuff not on the uh, actually the lab. Yes, I lost one time. One of the nodes on the Mac Mini just see. died. It was power. It, it, it was the power supply on the, on the Mini. Uh, and yeah, the guy that built your 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 flight yeah, case for you. Yeah, because I have, like, we have uh, training laptops. We have flight cases for it, yeah. made out of wood. But well, the, the the 50 pounds. If I have an empty flight case, I can put two laptops in it, and then I have 50 pounds. It can hold five laptops, including all the peripherals. But uh, uh, weight wise, it can only hold two laptops. Is it very thin uh, material? Uh, no, no, it's not two things. You are going to see later because I'll bring it. The, the actual case, hey boy, the actual case is I built for the lab itself. So the case is the lab. What I mean by that is there is another case that's where the lab goes inside. Ah, uh, okay. Okay? Yeah. So it, it's, you know, I know what you mean, like in my case, I didn't use this as a traveling case. Yeah. The case itself is the lab. Is it, as a traveling case, you need to use uh, aluminum or yeah, aluminum? Yeah, or exactly, aluminum. that's what I have, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, because even the power supply, like inside, one of my, my concerns was like, oh, I don't want to have something that I have 20 wires going out. I just want a one single cable. I plug to the power and it powers everything. The Mac Mini, the WAN emulator, everything. So that's what I was able to do. So there is a single cable going to the outside. And what display port do you have on that thing? And the what? What, what display uh, port do you have on that thing? Considering the problem that I have. I have no display going out <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> So if shit happens, I have to open the bag and start removing shit. But it works. It works really well. Cool. Cool? Awesome. Thank you, guys.